didn't come through like we thought it was, we'll, we'll lean on that one. Maybe it wasn't the Lord's will. Amen. It was the Lord's will when it's lined up with the Word of God. It was His will. Amen. With anything that's pertaining to the Word of God, uh, that's lined up with the Word of God, it is His will for your life. And don't back up off of it. I don't care what it look like. I don't care what it feel like. Amen. Because our emotions, our feelings can get in the way. Amen. But that's when you have the word and you back them up. Because every thought is not your thought. Thoughts come from the enemy. Hallelujah. And you better back that up right away. Because you don't want it to, hey, hey uh, as, as you say, you don't want it to take in your mind and then go down to your heart amen you want to stand on the word of god no matter what and let me see uh what else i wrote down uh uh let's see i'm hoping to get let's see i, I said uh you leave a room for the possibility that you may not receive the answer to your prayer when you're just hoping okay I uh, hope and pray and believe. That's what we have to do. We have we hope, we pray, we believe. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So I believe what I'm hoping for. I'm not just hoping. I believe and I'm standing on the word of God because that's what he said. So I'm looking at it as it's already done. Hallelujah. We're just waiting on the manifestation of it. Let's look at Matthew 16 and 9. Matthew 16 and 9. 19, I'm sorry. 19. Okay. Let's see. And that's why our prayers uh, must be based on God's word. It's a surety. It's a guarantee that it will uh, come to pass. And Mark 16, 19, I got to see why I wrote that down. Let's read that. It says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bound. You know what? I think that was for something different that I was uh, looking at, that I wrote that down. I know why I wrote that down. That was a reminder to me to look that up later. That's why I wrote that down. So uh, let's look at Mark 13. Mark 13 and I think 31. These are, these are, um, these are the times we get the information and then we go back home and, and study it so that it becomes a part of our lives. Amen. Mark 13 and 31. Yep. That's what that's the scripture that says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. God's words will never pass away. His words are true, they're sure, and you can always stand on the word of God. Let's look real quick at Isaiah 40 and 8. Isaiah 40 and 8. Whew. Glory to God. Isaiah 40 and 8. And it says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth. It's, it's Isaiah 40 and 8. I'm going to wait a second so you can get there. Isaiah 40 and 8. And see, he talks about this in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Isaiah 40 and 8. Everybody there? Hallelujah. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> yes. Okay. Isaiah 40 and 8 says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth away. So things are going to fade. The grass going to wither, the flower going to fade. But the word of our God Amen. shall stand forever. Amen. Oh, I want to be with something that's going to stand forever. Amen. That ain't going nowhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when I have the word on the inside, inside of me, what does that mean? That means I'm going to stand. Yes. Yes. 
Hallelujah. When we have the word of God planted in our hearts, that means we're going to stand. And when the word is in there, it's like when the enemy tries to come against us, we fight him back with the word of God. And you may sway, but you're still giving them that word on the way back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know how sometimes you can get hit. Not, you know, you get hit, hit with something in the natural. You be like, whoa. And then you come back with the word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We'll be like that tree that's planted by the rivers of waters. We shall not be moved. Okay, I need you to go to Mike, no, Pastor. I just want to say that verse of scriptures in First Peter, chapter one, verse number twenty. Yeah, that was my next one. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> First Peter, chapter one, actually twenty-four and twenty-five. Thank you, Pastor. You own it. You own it. <laughs> Thank you, uh, First Peter. Chapter 1, verse 24 and 25. That's right after Hebrews. Yeah. After James, I'm sorry. Hebrews, James, and 1 Peter. Did somebody turn the heat up? Okay. Yeah. Just put it on run and we'll be good. I had it on run. It says 1 Peter 1, uh, 24 through 25. It says, everybody got that? For all flesh is as grass. And y'all, the scriptures that are not in the book that I'm giving you, write those down so you can go back and read them. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. The word of the Lord endureth forever. And you know what? When we get that word of God on the inside of us, number one, we become born again, and then we get that word on the inside of us, we are going to endure forever. Amen. Because even when we leave here, we just fall asleep, and we just, I'll put it this way, we just transition. We step out of this life into the next life. Amen. Because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have put the word of God down on the inside of us. And it causes us to endure. Amen. And I like that word. It says endure. And that means you can hold up under pressure. You endure. Hallelujah. There are going to be things in this life that you're going to have to endure. Yes. Glory to God. But God is faithful. Hallelujah. Oh, whatever he promises shall come to pass. Yes. He said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver them out of them all. And let me tell you something. God delivers you by the word of God. He gives his word to give instruction of how to come out of it. Yes. You know, he said that there's no temptation taken unto man that is not common to man. But he will give us a way of escape. And his way of escape is the word of God. He will give you the word. It may hurt your pride a little bit when you escape. Amen. But if you follow his word, you'll escape. And I tell you, I'd rather my pride to be hurt than to uh, uh, stay in danger. Amen. To, to get a hold of something that's going to affect my life for, uh, that's going to take me longer to get delivered from. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. I don't know about y'all. You ever been in situations like, man, if I had done that like that, if I had followed the will of God, if I have done what he had told me to do, I wouldn't be in this situation right now. But, oh, thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God, as pastors say so many times, for 1 John 1 and 9. <laughs> Hallelujah. If we sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But I tell you what, it's best not to even go down that road. Just stay on this side. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. Cause it, oh yes. Cause it'll have you, you'll have thoughts that you would have never had yes. if you hadn't have went down that way. Oh Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So I decree we are obedient saints. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do what the Lord uh, tells us to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God's word is good, isn't it? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we know that faith goes along, that faith goes along with hope. If you, hope does not stand alone. Okay. It has to be combined with faith if you want to see it come to pass. Yes. If you want to uh, rule out, get rid of all doubt, you combine faith with hope. Mm -hmm. Don't just hope out there alone. We don't want to be a hoping and a praying. We want to be believing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the word, is, the word of God is good. Amen. And uh, um, let's, let's go over to page 16. Hallelujah. We have to believe God. And it's important. Uh, you know what? I, I want to get this because I like this little saying. What Kenneth Hagin asked uh, uh, one of the ladies. Uh, I'm going I'm to go to the bottom. You don't have to do that. Uh, she was a member of a church and she wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay. And he first thing he asked her, was she a Christian? And uh, uh, she said, you understand that you can, um, he told her that you can be, let me jump back. She said, well, I'm a member of a church. Okay. But of course we know a mem being a member of a church does not make you a Christian. Amen. Okay. So uh, that's what he was talking about. Uh, salvation is not a matter of being a member of a church. It's a matter of being born again. Amen. And so um, that's, that's what, oh, thank you, Jesus. That's, that's one way that I use to get into witnessing to somebody because I know many people are, uh, they'll say, you know, I belong to a church. So I ask them, I was like, oh, what church you go to? You know, and they tell me, and then I can go in. Oh, so you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, <laughs> hallelujah. And so that's a way to get in, you know. And, and uh, if they haven't, then we can talk about that, you know. So she said, yes. And she said, I know that. Then she knew that she was born again. He said he accept her testimony. Look at this, y'all. I love this. He said, don't let the devil talk you out of it. Once you become born again, don't you let the devil talk you out of it. I don't care what somebody else says, because the enemy can use other people. I mean, of course, we don't get mad with the people, okay? But the enemy can use other people. Maybe you're not uh, uh, where you're going yet. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you're still a baby Christian. Maybe there are things that you're still uh, working through. And somebody may look at you and say, oh, they ain't saved. You know what I'm saying? And no, don't let the devil, uh, don't let the devil talk you out of it. When you know that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your behavior as you get into the word of God and as you hear the word of God through a preacher, amen, uh, uh, and that's why it's good to be a part of a good Bible-believing church that preaches the word of God, you know what I'm saying? And uh, as you're walking through this, yeah, there's some things that's going to fall off as you walk, amen? So don't let somebody tell you, oh, you ain't saved. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. Don't let nobody steal your testimony. That you have been born again. Amen. He said, don't let the devil talk you out of it. And I'm going to add to that. When you're believing God for a promise, if you're standing on the word of God for whatever it is, your children, finances, healing, deliverance, I don't care what it is, a mate, glory to God, hallelujah, marriage, better marriage, whatever it is, don't back up off of it hallelujah stand on that word of god don't let the devil talk you out of it don't let anybody else talk you out of it stay on the word of god don't back up off of what god has promised you in his word and yes he's gonna try to get you to back up if he tried to get jesus to back up who are we amen and my time is up
<laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So um, y'all don't forget, go back and read the lesson. And make sure that uh, you can answer your questions ahead of time. Because when you answer, uh, when you go back through there and answer your questions, and of course, all the questions are in the lesson. So you don't have to try to go somewhere else and figure the questions out. They're all right there uh, in the lesson. So what you want to do is go ahead and answer those questions. And what it does, it helps you to remember what you have been taught and I other books that we've gone through in Sunday Bible class other books that we've gone through I go back and refer to those books when I need to I go back and refer to those even when I'm studying these lessons to teach something may remind me okay remember that was in this book that's why it's good to keep your books too because you can also refer back to those books when you need them amen Hallelujah. The Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised. And there are some out there right now. You may have heard me talking about this life and how greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world and the joy that we have that the world can't take it away. You may want to experience this. Oh, I tell you, you know what? I said you may, but I'm telling you, you want to experience this. Amen. Jesus came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Do you want to live an abundant, victorious life? Then come on and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Savior, Jesus died for you. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but will have everlasting life. Because when you leave this earth, and we all going to leave here one day, when you leave this earth, you're going to have to spend eternity somewhere else. It's not over when you leave this life. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and then after death, the judgment. And you want to stand before the Lord, having accepted him as your Lord and your Savior. And the only thing that you have to do, he said, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Amen. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. You believe in your heart that uh, God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. It's just as simple as that. Don't try to uh, 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 stop doing something or say, well, I'll come to Jesus when I fix this or when I correct this. No, come as you are right now. He loves you. While we were yet sinners, he loved us. So come on and give your life to Jesus Christ right now. It's really simple. All you have to do is pray this prayer right along with us. So come on and bow your head and those that are here are gonna pray along uh, with you. And if, you, if somebody else is watching that's near you that is already born again, just grab their hand and pray along with them. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear God, I come to you now as a sinner. And I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ died for my sins. And on the third day, I believe that you raised him from the dead. I accept what Jesus Christ did for me. I accept him now as my Lord and my Savior because I believe this in my heart and I've confessed with my mouth, I am now saved. I am now born again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. And what we have, we have this little booklet called the New Birth that we want to get in your hands. And we have a number for you to call, and that's 810-515-1286. That's 810-515-1286.
6386. You can call that number and we will get this booklet to you. Call the number if no one answers. Leave a message. Leave your number. We will call you back so that we can get this information to you. Uh, we will bring it to you or we will mail it to you however you want to receive it. And after becoming born again, you need to get in a good Bible-believing church. An Abiding Faith Christian Center is a good place to be. Well, God bless you. And we are having our 11 a.m. morning worship. If you're in the area, you still got time to get here. And then also, if you're not coming uh, to the building, then join us again at 11 a 1130 a.m. for morning worship. Amen.